Hello, everyone. Oh, hear me. Hello. If you can hear me, just give a nod. Sure this sound works. friend's house in Tokyo who is on this penthouse floor so uh, this place is so big I'm in a room where the wi-fi is actually so far from the router making sure everything's okay all right everyone can hear me great so let's get started um yeah so one of the main reasons I wanted to have this uh live call and this uh zoom call is because there's just so much information right now uh, all over the internet about the coronavirus right so not only is there um, lots of information about how, uh, how it's spreading, there's also information currently about the mortality rates, right? How um, sort of deadly it is. And then there's all kinds of other information such as, um, you know, is it real? Is it not real? What's really happening? And so um, I wanted to make this call to kind of give not only people some sense of structure um, about what's happening, but you know, what, what can you do about it, right? Because ultimately, right now, what we're being told by mass media, our government, and those that are in control, is uh, the strategy of essentially social distancing, quarantine in your home, and uh, the goal is to basically stop the spread of it. And so, while I am um, personally opting out of that, I do, you know, fully respect people's decisions to do this. Uh, but I want to offer um, a different reality, right? Because I still believe that as we are doing this, and it's um, a great series and set of decisions and actions that fits the current system and the current story, and I'll talk about what that system and story is, I believe that we get to create a different system and a different story, right? And so we're gonna talk about that. And then we're gonna talk about um, what can you do? Like, what can you do given this current system, right? It's almost like uh, you can decide if you wanna stay in this system. And if you wanna stay in the system, how can you navigate within this game, this set of rules that you've been given so you can enjoy this game or you can actually opt out Right. You can actually opt out and make your own rules and make your own game and you can play in that sort of game. Right. And so, and again, I respect your choice for either decision. There's no right or wrong. Um, and in fact, um, both games have their value, right? Both games actually has a value for you to, to play. Right. And so, and, and before we get into this, you know, for those of you that don't know me well, I will say that I don't see things from a right, wrong, good, bad, positive, and negative uh, perspective. So anything that I'm saying 
if um, you're interpreting that I'm saying something is good, bad, right, wrong, positive, negative, know that as that is not my intention, right? And uh, the reason I do that is because those words of duality of right, wrong, good, bad, positive, negative, actually in my mind serves no purpose, right? Because if we discuss anything that's good, bad, right, wrong, positive, negative, at the end of the discussion, there's really no actionable outcome, no usefulness that comes from it. The only outcome is some person's ego gets to be like, yes, and maybe the other person says yes, or the other person says no. Basically, there's no useful actionable from that. From that. And so I'm a huge fan of how do we just craft a story, right? Let's bypass if it's good or bad, positive, negative, right, or wrong, and just craft a story that is fitting for us. And keep in mind that when you want to be positive, when you ask to be positive, you're of course telling yourself currently it's negative, right? And so that's a whole another discussion webinar I can have on that. But so I just want to set the ground rules of this of this video. Because a lot of times uh, when I have these discussions, people that don't know me, you know, they have this idea that I might be saying things that are good or bad, right? And so let's just jump into, I'm just going to bring up the um, event video or the event description so I can, I can stay on track because usually I free flow these things, right? And so the thing that we're going to discuss right now is you know, Zoom has all these new settings and I like went on the back end of turning all these Zoom settings like on, on, on. So now there's like 50 new buttons in the taskbar below and I'm uh, managing the new taskbars. So when it comes to the coronavirus, right? So let's just look at some different realities, right? So right now the recommendation is stay in and we're going to stop the spread and we're starting to see that it's kind of slowing down. Great. You know, I would say like, imagine like six months from now, you know, I'm in Japan and in Japan, uh, Shibuya, which is like the Times Square of Japan, imagine like six months from now, some person in the world is going to still have the virus, right? We're not like eradicating it in the next year um, because there is some mutation happening. And so that person goes to the busiest intersection here, which is equal to the Times Square. Like if you've ever seen any videos of like massive amounts of people walking in Japan, that's like the intersection. It's like, you know, Times Square. And someone coughs all over everyone else. Right. And so it starts to spread again. Well, what do you buy? What do we do then? Do we do we re quarantine everyone? Because those people will go and spread it throughout the country. If they travel to other countries, it spreads to other countries. And so this is a very likely, highly probable reality. Right. Um, and so I think the only in my mind, the only option, a long term strategy is to simply uh, enhance our immune system. Right. And know that the current language of uh, let's slow down the spread because it's overwhelming the hospital system. Uh, we don't have enough ventilators. Um, hospital system personnel are being affected um, and all that. Know that that message is telling you that you are powerless, right? You cannot do anything about this. So you must hide because we don't want you to overburden the hospital system. Right. There's a, always a subconscious implied message and implied command um, in many, many stories and statements. I just don't believe in that statement. Right. So those of you may not know this, but in the original cruise ship where there was a major outbreak, I believe there's about 711 people uh, with conf confirmed cases. They tested them and 18 percent of those people had zero symptoms whatsoever. Nothing, completely nothing. And if you notice, the news isn't focusing on that, right? The news isn't saying, hmm, how do we be those 18 people, right? Or 18% of the 711 people, right? So we're looking at, uh, you know, 140, 130 people, right? How we're doing that is we understand how the virus is actually affecting our body, right? Because, you know, many of you may not know, we live with viruses, right? And a, a great example of this uh, in traditional medicine, they'll say things like, you got shingles. Well, that is a completely false statement. You've had the virus of chicken pox since you've had it when you were young. And that virus and any virus you've ever had um, in your lifetime has been in your system. It's been in your system, right? Because it just basically attaches to your, your DNA. And what ends up happening is you don't get shingles you suppressed your immune system enough where your immune system is now out of 
frequency and alignment. In other words, we're not, we're not coexisting with that virus anymore. And that virus is now upset at you and it manifests into symptoms of shingles, right? This is a very different route than you got shingles. If medicine were to speak in the language of root causes, what the doctor would say would go something like this. Um, you have currently lived and made choices in a way where your immune system is suppressed. If I speak in biological world, your chemical immune system has been suppressed. If I want to speak in vibrational world, I would say your frequency of your system is now out of alignment with the virus and with nature, right? If I want to speak in a mechanical world, I would say you're do doing too much, right? Your system, you're mechanically moving your system in your body and maybe sitting in a way or positioning in a way that is out of alignment with what your body wants. If we speak in an environmental perspective, we could say you are exposing yourself to environmental stressors in a way that the environment is now tasking your body and your system and your vibration and your biology, thus not allowing the system to fully normalize, right? Because everything in our body is designed to heal. Everything in our body is designed to get back to uh, what I would call homeostasis, which is just fancy for um, normal, right? So back to the screen, right? So when you can see it this way, then the question is how do we get our body back to normal and back to homeostasis, right? And um, some of that, which we will talk about, um, there are a lot of choices that you can do for this to happen. Right. And so some of them essentially is stop watching the news, right? Literally plain and simple. The news is designed to um, not educate you, right? Obviously, I'm sure many of you entrepreneurs, you know this, right? The news is designed to, to make money, right? Like it's like any business. And so the more views that they have, the more ad revenues they get, the more profitable they are. So how do they get you to watch the news all the time? They basically tell you any second from now, there's some danger around the corner. Right? Because if you truly believe that, you would want to watch the news to know when is the next danger happening so you can avoid the danger. Right? And so there's two things that happen from that. One, it implants in your subconscious that there's danger always around the corner. Right? If you watch any news, typically there's some danger around the corner that they're reporting. Right? Either a plane crashed or someone did this that's going to harm you, some kind of implied danger that's being subconscious implanted into you. And two, it tells you that you're in fear and that you're powerless, right? And so what happens is we know that based on um, studies, that um, idea suppresses your immune system by 50, up to 50%, right? Already just by watching the news and being in that state, your system is now suppressed by 50%. And so you get a choice, right? You can either um, choose to stay up on the latest statistics of how it's spreading, how many people it's spreading, what's the mortality rate, and I'll get to how those numbers are completely skewed. Um, and this is not conspiracy theory stuff, this is public information, right? And I recently posted, for example, the CDC wants all doctors on people's death certificates, this is their post, their language, that says, you know, we don't have enough to test everyone. And even if you suspect someone has a coronavirus and they died, just write down, it's from the coronavirus. Right. Imagine what that does to the data, right? Completely will skew the data. There's nowhere in other um, science where it says, oh yeah, just best guess. Just write down the best guess, right? Typically it's like measured. You know, people always talk about like, oh, that's not randomized placebo control, it's worthless. Well, right now the data that we're, we're being reported all over the world, it's best guess, right? Best guess. And two, right? So I just saw a post from someone when the uh, virus was spreading in LA, they only had enough tests to test certain people. So they only tested people above age 65, 65 and older. And you can imagine what does that do to the data, right? If they only test the people of high risk, then they can say, well, a thousand people were tested and this percent died. And so now everyone's going to take that percent and extrapolate it to if we multiply that by how many Americans they are, then this many people will die. That doesn't, that doesn't apply, right? Because not everyone in America is 65 and above. If everyone in America was 65 and above, then those statistics would actually hold true. And so there's some very intentional skewing of data that's happening. And we don't get into, we won't even get into why the rabbit hole, why are they doing this and conspiracy theory stuff that doesn't help us on this call, right? 
It just helps us to understand that the data is being skewed. Now, on the flip side to this, I'm not suggesting that no one's dying from the virus. There's absolutely people dying from the virus, just like there's people dying from the flu, dying from all kinds of stuff, heart disease, tobacco, car accidents. I'm sure you've all seen the Facebook posts of, oh, this many people die from this and, and this many people die from that. I'm just giving people perspective. And the reason I'm giving you this perspective is simply to tell you that there's actually not as much to fear as what the mass media is imparting onto you, right? And so one of the simplest things that you can do to get out of that state is to simply practice, you know, focusing on your breath, right? Diaphragmatic breathing, right? So most chest breathe, right? Which is chest breathing would be like this chest breathing. If you just tune into yourself and notice how you're breathing, you'll find that when you're especially in the fear and stressed state, which I'll get into why I'm doing air quotes of stress state, you will typically end up doing chest breathing, right? Whereas if you can, you do diaphragmatic breathing, which is your chest stay still, and you inhale by letting your stomach relax and exhale by letting your stomach in. And that practice is profound, right? I just wanna spend a minute on why that breathing um, is so profound in life, because I believe that the little details that we live on an everyday basis it's God slash universe slash the matrix that we're in, whichever your story is, is actually telling us infinite wisdom, right? Just think, when you chest breathe, it takes muscles here to lift your ribs up. It takes energy and effort and tension to get something that is the essence of life into your system. And just by breathing that way, we're practicing, it takes high tension and effort in order to get something valuable in. Whereas when you diaphragmatic breathe, it's the opposite. You relax your diaphragm, which creates negative pressure, right? And so basically less pressure outside versus in, which forces the air in. And it's the practice of letting go to get the essence of life in, right? So one is high tension and effort to get the essence of life in. And one is a practice of letting go, surrendering, relaxing, uh, decreasing tension to let the essence of life in. Literally, this is profound if you think about it, right? How are you getting stuck in life? Are you using high tension and effort, high effort, or are you using relaxation and letting go to get, right? Essence of life. So tiny, tiny bit of detail, if applied to us, can be profound. I believe that the things that help us the most, you know, some of you may be on this call thinking you'd get like 10 health hacks. I don't believe in health hacks. I believe in um, tiny, 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 uh, simple practices that shifts our reality, that's what changes lives, right? It's not about tips and tricks. And so when you practice this breathing technique, when you let go of the need and the desire to stay on top of the data, just think about it, you wanna stay on top of the data for two main reasons, right? I pulled some of you, the two main reasons is when will this end and how do I prevent this and um, help other people and not give it to other people? And so, Keep in mind that since 1984, some of you, you know, have heard me say this, since 1984, they've done studies showing that our DNA broadcasts light particles out into the world, the universe, right? So 90% of us, our DNA is actually emitting light and light is a photon, right? And a photon can be a wave and every wave carries information and data within it, right? Just like Wi-Fi waves, I'm using Wi-Fi right now. Uh, just like radio waves, right? Any kind of waves carries data. And so our state, our feelings, right? Is broadcasting everywhere, right? If you're in a room with someone and you're feeling, you know, stress, I'll continue to use the air quotes until I get to why, uh, and, and anxiety and all the, all the emotions, you're literally broadcasting that. The other way that it is, you know, if you're very, very, very stressed and you're next to someone, not only is your immune system suppressed by 50%, the longer you're next to that person, you're, um, you're communicating to their system to be also suppressed, right? Unless that person has had um, some type of energy practice, they, they know how to um, interpret and, and sort of judo that data. Most people don't. If they don't, they're just receiving that data without knowing it, right? So this is very powerful to, to realize that we have that power, right? We literally, um, are superhumans, right? Like each day I've been, I've been in Japan for about two weeks and each day I do one or two talks uh, for my friend Akira. And 
I share with the Japanese amazing people who I really appreciate their sense of order and mastery and precision that we're literally super beings. We're light beings, right? And so we're literally light beings. We have the superhuman ability to broadcast light into the universe to shine our data out into each other. Yet we are told by school, by mass media, by people, the masses, that we're this like fearful creature that must be、um, caged, right? Caged to protect other people, which I do not believe. Right? I believe that we can absolutely vibrate at a state and help other people vibrate at a state, right? So this virus does not affect us, and I'm I'm personally choosing that reality. Again, I respect if you're quarantined and you're social distancing. Awesome, right? We we have our own stories. We get to choose our own stories, and so,、um, and so now I will break into the dude realities, right? If you're choosing to be,、um, you know, you're experiencing fear. I'm not asking you to completely change that.、Um, what I suggest is you can take that fear and that energy, right? Fear typically comes from a lot of things are moving, and there's some type of uncertainty, right? Energy is moving, and you haven't figured out. What to do with that energy? If you knew what to do with that energy, there wouldn't be any fear. And so, if you're in that fear state, I highly suggest that you get to use that energy for a serving purpose for you. And so, what what does that mean? It means that right now, I、uh, you can choose. You can choose to let's say binge watch Netflix. I see these posts on Facebook, which essentially is let me tune out. Let me have an extra. Program put me in trance and hypnosis, which is what watching TV and movie is. Puts me in trance and hypnosis and just shoves a reality into our brain, thus programming our subconscious into what to expect and how to build a life. Now、um, that sounds, if this sounds、um, unusual to you, let me make it a little bit more concrete. If、um, if every TV show that you watched、um, went something like this, or a movie went something like this. Um, Bob wanted a bike. Bob got a bike.、Uh, Bob wanted a girlfriend. Bob got a girlfriend. Bob wanted an amazing marriage. Bob got an amazing marriage. Bob wanted to to be a CEO to build a company. Bob became CEO to build a company. Bob wanted to make a million dollars. Bob made a million dollars, right? And so, if every TV show was that,、um, basically, we would just expect this. But that's not every TV show, right? And so.、Um, Every TV show movie has what's called a hero's journey, right? And so there's this like drama. And in fact, to make it entertaining, they heighten the drama, right? Everything is heightened. And so as we're watching the TV show and the movies, that just keep in mind that is actually being programmed. It's setting our subconscious expectations of what is real. And so you can choose that, right? I I personally don't choose that.、Um, or or if you're under fear, now the best time ever to use that fear. Right, use the leverage. I don't believe in negative emotions. Right, there's no good, bad, right, wrong, negative, positive. Every emotion has its purpose. Right, because it's the the some of the people who are just getting into the personal growth space. They'll say, I mean, I've heard actually people say、um, emotions are not real. Well, they're real. You can define it as emotions are just a mix of a little bit of this brain chemical, this little brain chemical, that brain chemical. So it's not real. Well, guess what? In our internal experience, emotions. Very real. We're emotional beings, right? And so we're not just broken down. We're not just a bag of chemicals. And so emotions are very real, and every emotion has its use, right? So a great example I give is like, tiger is running at you, and you're gonna say, my fear is not real.、Uh, my fear is negative. Let me be positive and let me be happy. Tiger eats you. Fear actually has a great purpose. Run in that moment, right? Based on fear. And so if you're using the fear in this and that. You get to ask yourself, how do I, how do I use this energy of fear in a way that serves me? Well, you could right now, great time to enhance your health. Right? We know if you look at the studies. I just looked at because I live in New Jersey, and I'm about to head back to New Jersey, so I want to see what's up. So I went online and looked at some data. So as of April fourth, eight hundred and sixty-two people have passed away from the coronavirus. Yet four. Four out of 862 people were only four that did not have other illnesses, other underlying chronic illness conditions. Four, right? And so what that means is 858 other people were already sick from something, 
Well, what does that mean? It means if we actually do something to our health where we are not currently sick, our chance of dying, super small, right? Keep in mind, I didn't say 800 had it. Um, it's 806 people that died, right? I mean, 31,000 people, something like that had it, right? And so they always say this, four people actually died directly from the virus out of 31,000 plus cases, right? And so right now is a great opportunity for you to actually focus on your health, do all the practices that actually improve your health. And I'll, I'll make a separate video on how to do that because that's about a, a two hour lecture. And so I will skip that. In general, for now, I would just practice that breathing technique because at the fundamentals of it, people always ask me like, I don't know what supplements to take, what to eat, and blah, blah, blah. And I've said this in other videos before, I'm a huge fan of like, in the beginning of learning something, you want to learn all the tips and tricks. At some point when you master stuff, all the masters will say, just do the basics, master the basics. After studying how humans behave and how humans function, how humans heal from multiple different perspectives, right? From biomechanics, from um, chemical, from energy and all this stuff. I super simple, just check in right now, take a breath and notice, are you in a state of ease? Or are you in a state of dis-ease, lack of ease, not in ease? It's literally that simple. And if you can get your state to be in ease, you're actually in a state of healing, harmony, um, alignment, health, you name it. If you're in a state of dis-ease, you're not in that, right? And so I'm empowering you to ask yourself that question and letting you explore your own journey of how to get into ease and how not to be in disease all the time. There'll be moments when you're in disease, right? If I'm at your house right now and I punch you in the face, you're probably going to be momentarily in a state of disease. Hopefully, not for long, right? I mean, you could, right? You could actually be like, "Oh my God, Steve's such a dick. He punched me in the face," and you can be mad at me for years, and you will be in a state of disease, right? But if you say, "Well, maybe Steve was just angry. I'm glad he was able to release his anger onto me. I'm so grateful that I, I can be that space for him." You might be only angry for a split second and it would be back into the state of ease. You get to choose a story, right? And so now it's a great segue to go back to the airport of stress, right? The language of stress, when people say we do stress, I'm under stress, I'm buried by stress, I'm overwhelmed with stress, I deal with stress. Stress is a symptom, right? The root cause is how we're framing the story. And so I, I am um, offering the opportunity to you, for you, that you get to reframe the story and speak um, spells, speak spells and incant words at the level of root causes and not at the level of symptoms, right? Oh, dramatic pause. And so the root cause is how you're framing the story. People talk about reducing stress. Reducing stress is wording symptoms, right? And so make sure you're putting your attention in root causes, not just symptoms, right? There are times symptoms relief is great, but obviously root cause ends the thing, right? And so that was under the umbrella of using fear and judoing it, right? Um, if you believe in the other story, right, which is, I don't know, maybe you believe this is all conspiracy, none of it is real, everyone's going crazy and all that stuff. I suggest that you don't try to break and convince people of their stories because that's a very uh, complicated process. It's much easier to support the other people who are in fear and simply help them judo it. How do you take that energy, take that story of fear and craft a slightly different ending? We don't want to recreate the entire story. That's sometimes for people um, that may not be as practiced as other people. Right. And so it becomes very frustrating if you're trying to revamp people's stories with them and for them. Most people don't like to, because of cognitive biases, to completely revamp their stories. Right. So take their fear and support them and use questions to help them craft a different ending. Right. And so what I'm, that's what I'm suggesting right now. You take that fear and you use that fear to craft a different ending of improving your health. Use that energy of fear and use it towards improved health. Right. And so focusing on self. And a simple, you know, actionable is breath and checking in ease versus disease, right? So that's the fear state. Now, if you're on the other camp, right, if you're in the other camp, and that's like an inward journey in the other camp, which is, you know what, I'm actually opting out of fear. Great, right? That's just, you know, it's what I'm doing. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, just my choice. I'm hoping all of you 
um, can respect my choice just like I respect yours to stay home. And keep in mind that obviously um, I'm not out there coughing on other people and licking them, right? So even, um, you know, as much as I want to hug people and, and, and you know, careful with all this. And so in this other reality, if you're out there, I highly encourage you to speak like I'm, you know, speaking on stage and telling people about this stuff. We can all do our part to empower people and tell them that they can empower their innate immunity. The innate immunity is a term used to say, basically, um, our immune system can recover and adapt and heal from everything, right? This is not the language that the masses in the hospital systems are using, right? Keep in mind when they say, wash your hands, um, stay at home and uh, wear a mask, right? Those are all things to protect and avoid, protect and avoid, right? The, the common theme of those recommendations is protect and avoid. Right. What's the implied message of protect and avoid is you suck. Right. Because they're not saying go out there naked and lick everyone because you're powerful. Right. That's a whole obviously, you know, exaggerated other end. But they're saying you need to protect and avoid. Right. And so I can tell you that you, if your innate immunity is so high, there actually is no need to protect and avoid. Now, I'm not. You know, I'm saying don't wash your hands and if you want to wear a mask, you know, wear a mask. I'm just saying we want to be mindful that we do have this innate immunity that's not being talked about. Right. And so, again, if you believe in innate immunity and you believe that there's light shining from you, that's actually affecting everyone else's immune system, not just yours, then it becomes that much more important to improve your health. Right. Interesting. It all circles back to what. Right. So as you feel not in that state of stress because you frame the story in a way that is helpful for you. So you actually don't feel stressed. I don't believe in that linear stress environment ever. You can now vibrate at a, a certain frequency that is now shooting those light particles out and doing that for other people without you even speaking a word, just embodying that state. You're constantly shooting those light particles out into other people and into the world. Now, of course, you can do it biologically, right? And this is, you know, this is some of the outer um, recommendations. I talked about the inner and outer recommendations. The outer recommendations I posted, right? Obviously taking uh, very specific supplements and, you know, I have posts on that, so I won't go into the details. If people want, they don't, haven't seen that, I can just share the link. Tons of supplements for that. Um, of course, the, the you know, breath work is amazing, uh, but ultimately, first, the first and foremost, is believing that you have this immense, you know, immensely powerful innate immunity. Because if your story isn't even there, nothing else, right? That's the foundation. Your story dictates reality. All the tips and tricks mean nothing. All the hacks, all the biohackers and hacking, all that stuff, completely irrelevant and not super effective if you don't have the story in place, right? Tips and tricks will never trump strategy, right? So the strategy, the story, is you have this super powerful innate immunity that actually makes you impervious to all illnesses and all diseases. If you believe that, then everything you do subconsciously will basically be doing to support that story. People who are believed they're in constant danger and under threat, and therefore they're biohacking to offset the threat and danger, that's a never ending loop. Right? I don't, I'm not a big fan of never ending loops, right? So get the stories and then take action to support the story of this immensely powerful innate immunity, right? So these are some of the actionable that you can get, right? In terms of when will this end? I'm kind of looking to this, right? And so um, I don't think it will end, right? There's already some initial cases they don't quite know yet. There's definitely some initial signs of mutations of this. There's some initial signs of people who are possibly tested, you know, uh, positive and negative and got sick again. I believe, here's what I know, um, and this, some of this information you're about to get, I will say just to be super upfront, some of it's science in reading, you know, I mean, just so you know, there's so much research about this, uh, as of three days ago, when I looked, there's 1,836 research articles about the coronavirus since January. That is a tremendous amount of research. I didn't read them all, but I know there's been that many because I go on PubMed and I can see that I've been reading a crap ton. I'm, I'm spending at least two hours a day, every single day, uh, reading this stuff. So what I'm about to tell you is from some science, some of it is, we'll just call it um, intuitive downloads, right? And if you know me well, you know that I'm a big fan of intuitive downloads and, and getting messages. And so my intuitive download is this is not going away, right? Um, this is 
the end that will be sold to us is a vaccine for sure. So if you're not a big fan of vaccines, I highly suggest that you um, build your immunity because this is not going to go away. Uh, and the time frame on this is going to be about 14 months right from now. So this is not like a thing that's going to blow over. What will basically end up happening is uh, in a month or two from now, obviously the world will realize, oh my God, like the, the economic crash from this far outweighs everything. And they can't keep faking the data anymore. They'll be like, oh yeah, it's, it's not as bad, right? It's not as bad as we thought. And then they're going to say, oh, it's because everyone did a great job of doing the quarantine, all that stuff. But we're going to hear constantly year round. For the next year, you're going to see, because the news will love this, is, you know, in August, in September, in November, they're going to be like, oh, look, this pocket of a mini outbreak happened here. Oh, it popped up here because, you know, the masses will be like, oh, my God, I got to watch news every day so I can avoid where am I going where there's these mini outbreaks. Trust me, this is going to happen. They're going to sell that story like like hotcakes. So the if you choose to opt out of that reality, it goes back to how do we build our innate immunity and how do we all each take action? We all have families. We all have, I mean, some of you may have a list of people, followers, friends on Facebook. I highly recommend all of you to start to tell other people, build your immunity, opt out of this fear state like you're powerless. Right now, just do a, a quick three minute thing on healthcare for those of you that don't know me. Healthcare is completely broken. The language of healthcare, you have diabetes, you have heart disease, you have arthritis, you have blah, blah, blah. That language is the language of the symptoms. It's also the language of you are powerless, right? You're powerless. And so when you come to us as a medical doctor, we will give you the pill to master the symptoms, to suppress the symptoms, thus allowing the root cause, which is your everyday choices and behavior to stay in place, to manifest, manifest more illness so we can give you more pills as you get older. It's designed to feed the system. Now, as ugly and as awful as that sounds, that is our system, right? It's why America spends $3.3 trillion on healthcare, right? We talk about the $2 trillion bailout. Oh my God, well, we spend $3.3 trillion every year on healthcare. And 90% of that, which is $2.9 trillion, is managing chronic illness, right? Managing chronic illness. It feeds the system. They don't want to have people be healthy. Because that's like saying we take away $2.9 trillion of profits for the system, right? That's, that's not in their best interest. And so it's up to us. It's up to us to take action to not only heal ourselves, empower ourselves, build our innate immunity, get into the state of ease and get out this ease. And part of that has to do with just fully recognizing we are already loved. Now I'm going to get a little bit of emotional woo stuff, but kind of spiritual, kind of scientific, which is imagine this. Imagine when you were young when you were three, four, five, six, seven, you sat there, you did nothing, you were drooling, you were zoning out, staring into space, and your parents came over and said, oh my God, that's amazing. Well, I'm sure everyone watching this, that was not the reality. The only time you got that's amazing is when you kicked a soccer goal, when you first walked, when you first smiled, when you got your A on your report card, when you did something. So conditioning tells us when we accomplish something, then we're worth it then we're worthwhile, then we're loved. That is just not true, right? So we are absolutely worthy of love, of everything, just being. And once you realize that we start to let go, right, versus working hard, breathing, comes back to that, let go of the need and constant linear desire to be doing to level up, right? The language of level up means you're currently at a lower level. The, the word of growth, personal growth, it means you're currently small. Right? That language is designed to perpetuate your chasing of worthiness and love. So recognize that that language is actually programming you to be, you suck. And I'm not a big fan of that. So something to think about, be aware of language patterns, uh, perpetuating the carrot chasing that's constantly embedding in us subconsciously, right? This is all on purpose because it moves the economy along, makes really great people, productive people, right? The drawback is doesn't make people of ease and happiness. Right. And so all of that. So the last part is I am making this video as a call to action um, for all of you watching. Right. And so I know that many of the people in my circle, I know some of you right now on this call personally, and I love all of you. Um, we can all do our part. Uh, um, this is the greatest opportunity for humanity. Um, this is not chaos. Um, this is not a crisis in my reality. I, I opt out of those words. Um, this is not whatever. 
it is actually the greatest opportunity because there's never been a time in human history where we have a lot of extra space, right? Like we, you know, the government says, and you know, your local communities and all that stuff says, you can't go out there and do your usual stuff. You can't go back on your hamster wheel right now, right? You're like forced off the hamster wheel. And so we have this amazing opportunity to say, hmm, now that we're off the hamster wheel and we're scratching our heads, what can we do? Well, one thing we could do is simply figure out how to get back on our hamster wheel or do it online and virtually, or we could do something else, right? And so something to think about, maybe, maybe God, universe, the matrix that we're in knocked us off this hamster wheel for us to realize there's something else um, that we could do. Right. And so just, you know, I'm not suggesting do this because, I, you know, that'd be that'd be like me playing God for you. I'm just a huge fan of seeing all obstacles as opportunities. And so this is an opportunity that becomes this great space. Right. Space is very important. Right. We all tip what we say. Well, many people will mask space. And so some people will say, oh, I have no time for blank. My, my day is full of stuff. Right. If your day is full of planned stuff, there's no room for magic to for God, universe, and matrix to insert something, some kind of magical something into your life because you filled it. And so now there's all this space, all this emptiness, right, for something magical to come in. And look for that, right? So look for that magic. Um, I mean, I could tell, literally right now it's it's unbelievable that I mean, if you could see the view, I have this probably the, I'm in like the biggest condo in Tokyo somehow at a friends of a friend's house right now, looking at the most beautiful view of Tokyo. Um, and you know, I'm speaking on stage, inspiring people to be healthy, inspiring them to be health coaches. Uh, just happened to leave America right before, I mean, where I live right before they kind of, you know, locked down, even though I don't use those words, but using that right now for ease of communication. And so we get to choose our reality, right? And so right now it's like, what is God? What is the universe? What is the simulation that we live in? Um, wanting to give us right and just be open to receiving that and so if you're open to that i believe there's never been a greater time than now to inspire other people right because everyone i mean i know personally you know my phone tells me my uh, uh face engagement time special on social media has increased 19 percent in the last week right and so i'm sure that's true for many of you and many people right because they're home so a lot of communication now is virtual and so there's there comes this amazing space and platform for all of us to share messages to each other, right? And so in other words, we get to choose what message we're sharing with each other, right? And so uh, I am um, asking all of you to join the collective to share messages that moves humanity along in a way that serves humanity. So we get to be very mindful of what we're sharing down to this the, the words, like every word has power. I always say to people, um, we, don't, we don't piece the alphabet together to make a word, we spell word because every word is a spell. If you look into all cultures, all ancient cultures, there's stories of magic and casting in movies, right? Because it's, it's totally just, we've, um, we've been hidden, um, sheltered, and almost in a way forbidden from that practice. That practice is real, right? Words are extremely powerful. It controls our reality. And so keep in mind that when we study language in school, that was grammar mostly, right? It's like learn a word, learn how to piece the word together to make sense. There wasn't um, choose a word that controls the vibration of your reality. I'm, I'm assuming most of you did not take that class, right? Because that class wasn't available at my school. Right. And so now is a great time to pay really attention to the words that we're using, because that language, um, I believe, will move humanity along. And I'll give you an example. Um, right now, um, people are using words like balance, right? Simple word balance suggests two things, right? You do this to two things to find some type of balance, whatever that balance is, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here. We are in the time of humanity. We are not in the time of balance. 50 years ago, balance, right? There was a lot of separate boxes. We weren't as interconnected as humans 50 years ago. So the language that we use that was useful 50 years ago was balance. Now everything is so interconnected. We're in a time of human history of harmony, right? So those of you that are still using balance in your life, you will find absolutely friction points that don't belong there, right? If you're trying to find balance or balance these things, you're like, hmm, 
there's some friction, some pain point in that area of my life. What's very, very interesting is if you start to use harmony, right? Apply the same scenario and use the word harmony, your brain will actually start to see patterns. It will start to see connections. It will create a strategy. It will see an approach that you were not able to see and conceptualize because you were using balance, right? So just, and this is just one word. I could, I could do a whole day talk on all kinds of other words that completely changes our reality. But a main one right now is just balance versus harmony. And so these are some amazing things for you to think about going forward. Now, that seems like, well, what does that have to do with health? It has everything to do with health, right? Because if you're using balance and you sense friction, you're essentially in a state of dis-ease. And if you're using harmony, you'll probably find that you're going to be in a sense of ease, in a state of ease. And that directly influences from a vibrational perspective uh, your immune system. And as you start to spread this, if you start to talk about this, I want you to all, if you, you know, um, feel desire to um, feel and think through this concept, it is immensely powerful, immensely powerful for your life, right? And so that's my call to action for you, right? So use the concept of words and the influence of words and your choice of words to help influence the rest of humanity, right? For moving of humanity forward, movement of humanity from the older reality of struggle and balance and fight, right? The words of let's fight the virus. No, it's, it's not a fight. It's this beautiful dance. Some of you may not know, we have like 380 trillion um, molecules of viruses in our body. We live 10% of our DNA is viruses, right? You may not be told this by your doctor and by mass media. Oh, by the way, we live symbiotically with bacteria, virus, fungi, all kinds of stuff, right? What we're told is if we don't understand it, kill it, right? I mean, this is in every movie, everything, right? You think about like, oh my God, I don't know what that is. I'm fearful of it, let's kill it. A lot of that's subconsciously embedded in our subconscious. I mean, my kids, when they see a bug, they're like, oh, that's amazing. A lot of people who see bugs, because they don't know, like, oh my God, that's, ooh, that's gross, right? Kids are like, oh my God, it's the most amazing thing, right? Because they haven't been programmed. And so, so much of this subconscious program has been embedded into us. We now have the space to delete those programs, right? And so that is my call to action for all of you. Um, yeah, if, if there's any questions, I will take some time to answer some questions. It's so oh, there's a question, Steve, what's your choice of replacement for lockdown? Got it. You know, um, I did make a post, DD. That's a great question. I did make a post on... Um, on my Facebook wall, right, of all my friends, like, hey, who, all of you created worse myths. Um, what's a, what's another term for lockdown that is serving, right, for you? And so I don't have um, a term. It'd be silly for me to, to say this term is the most useful for you. I'm simply uh, offering the opportunity for all of you to choose a term that is the most serving for you, right? Uh, because to me, it's just a puzzle piece. If you were a puzzle, if you were trying to solve a puzzle, right, what, what are the steps? Uh, you flip the box open, you look at what the puzzle is going to look like when you're finished. The next step is you flip over all the puzzle pieces and then you put the puzzle together, right? Pretty simple. What I find is that um, many of us will start to put the puzzle pieces together even when certain puzzle pieces are down and sometimes even without looking at the box. And so um, I, I can't play God for you and tell you this is what your box looks like. I, I can say, Let's flip over all the puzzle pieces and you get to decide, right? And so I would say, um, you know, giving a direct answer, I would say create, right? You can spend some uh, attention on what is the term that is most serving for you and your family. Because ultimately, whatever term you use, if you have a family, which you do, DD, that's going to affect them. What a, what a great opportunity to sit down with the family and say, you know what? Um, let's all play together and create a term for what this experience is right now. Right? That's a beautiful practice because what you're practicing with your whole family is the, the practice of controlling and influencing our own words and opting out of what the mass media is telling us to use. Right, So that, that would be my suggestion. If there's any other questions, you can just type it in the chat. Um, let's see. Raul, I'm in the middle of a clinic. I will be on and off. Oh, perfect. Yeah. You know, I love the fact that you're like taking care of humans and you're coming on this call. That's awesome. Oh, here's a question. 
Can you explain your experience about the behavior of the population in Japan during the last days? Sure. How have they reacted? Yeah. Fascinating, right? So in, um, in Japan, I will say the prime minister and the people here, they're not saying like you're forced to be at home or I'm going to lock you and arrest you. Like, and as, as awful as that sounds, I have friends in uh, other states um, that have been like they basically have tried to arrest them for being outside. So that is not the way here. Um, in fact, here there's suggestions of staying in. Right? What a beautiful way to, to present it. You have a choice, people. We are recommending that you stay in, but we're not saying you have to stay in. So people have a choice. And now, granted, the Japanese culture is very precise, very follow the rules, very in the box, which is why they create some of the most um, precise foods, precise equipment. So it's built into the culture that, I mean, a lot of them are staying inside. It's pretty quiet at night. But, you know, when I go out to the park, I mean, there was all kinds of kids playing. They're outside. Um, I would say 99% of the people are wearing masks, right? I'm the weird, not, well, I, I was gonna say I'm the weird white person, but I'm not white. So I'm the weird American that's walking around uh, not wearing the mask. And so, um, yeah, I, I don't get the sense of fear here at all. Um, there's concern, right? They're definitely concerned, but I, for sure, there's no sense of like panic and fear here, right? And even what I, I've been lecturing every day to about 15 to 20 people uh, once or twice a day, every day here. And I, you know, I'm obviously having a conversation with them. It's a small group and they're concerned, but they don't, they're, it's not like, oh my God, I'm, I'm very fearful and people are dying. And I don't, none of the hospitals are like overrun. There's no like medical panic here. It's very interesting, right? And, and you know, there are some people on my, on my Facebook wall that you guys don't know and see. I'm seeing posts like, it's weird. My friend just needed oxygen, which can be done in any hospital room, but they're keeping him in the ICU. There's some very interesting stuff happening. You don't see that on a normal basis. They just need oxygen, not even that sick, but they're keeping him in the ICU. There's something else. There's a story and agenda that's happening right now, which I will leave that rabbit hole. I'm not going to talk about why, but there's something of skewing of data of presenting things a different way that's happening. And so, um, yeah, and I, I don't see see that here. So Robin, um, how would you suggest those in denial of virus opting out and choosing to look to our power? How would you suggest to those in denial versus that opting out and choosing to look to our power? Well, um, yeah, so I, I don't want to suggest that. Yeah, so some people might be in denial, like the, the virus isn't there. I mean, there's definitely always something, right, that one would look at is there's always some type of something going on. There's always this dance, right? Just think if um, if there were in, in pure physiological terms, if there's nothing stressing our system, nothing frictioning our system, our system does not, it actually withers, right? It's almost like if you don't do any movement, you just sit there in bed, after three days, you lose protein and you're weakening. And so friction actually has use. So there's always things coming into our system. Right. And so if we apply that that principle to medicine and to biology, right, we now know if you keep your house too clean and your kids are not being exposed to bacteria, that's awful because their immune system, immune system isn't getting a chance to strengthen itself. And it actually become more sickly as they grow up. And so, sure, there's always some kind of virus that our body's interacting and dancing with that's always happening. So if anyone believes there's nothing actually happening, there, there's stuff happening for sure. It's just what's our relationship with the thing, right? We're only taught is the thing there or not there, right? Balance, there, not there. It's harmony. We're always harmonizing with everything. And so instead of thinking about what the thing is it there or not, what we get to think about is what's our relationship with the thing? How are we going to dance? We're always dancing. You're not going to be able to, you know, pretend like there's no partner. There's always a partner. Here's how you want to dance. You want to slow dance. You want to break dance. You want to, you know, swing dance. You want to do the waltz, right? It's the dance. Pay attention to how you want to dance. What is that relationship? So that would be my recommendation is to all the people who may be denying and all that stuff. No, it's, there's something there, but we get to choose a relationship with it. So Beth, uh,
let me get to one other question. So what is your evidence for the Americans skewing the data? Oh, the evidence for Americans skewing data, um, I mean, I posted this, it's directly a link on the CDC, right? So I didn't, it's not like a blog post that's written by someone else that's third hand, that's like whispering down the lane. This is straight from the CDC. If you read um, their language, right? It basically says, uh, use your best judgment, right? If you suspect that it's the coronavirus, um, write down the coronavirus. Right. Again, from a purely scientific perspective, that is not scientific, right? And so ideally, uh, and some other things that you may not know, um, there are tons of, I mean, I have friends who have confirmed um, relationships with companies that can offer easy home tests that will tell you um, if you have the coronavirus in five, anywhere from five to 45 minutes, depending on which company that's been validated and verified. And what they're meeting is they're meeting friction from the FDA because they don't want to approve it, right? These are tests, confirmed, technologically advanced, accurate tests, right? Some of them 96% sensitivity and specificity, which is amazing, and it's being blocked. There's, right, this is just like um, facts, right? This, this is not like some, I read about in the blog, this is directly from my friends who are working on this. And so the CDC's recommendations right there in plain sight, uh, and again, how the data is being reported is in the news, right? So I'm not, there's no, there's no um, mystery to this, right? They're not looking at how to heal. They're constantly looking at, you know, what's the mortality rate. And again, it's just very interesting that they're only testing certain age people in certain places. There's definitely a skew. So uh, let's see. Oh, got it. There's some, some private questions, which I will read later. Um, yeah, so any other public questions, I'll spend another few minutes um, reading this. If not, we can end. I know it's uh, pretty early for some of you West Coasters. I think here I'm in Japan, it is midnight in Japan, but it's okay. So I've been staying up late to, uh, to do some amazing calls with some business friends. So if there's any other questions, oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> Uh, what is the link? Oh, so Beth, if you want to know the link to the CDC thing, um, it's on my my you know my Facebook wall. Uh, it was maybe two to three posts ago. You'll you'll be able to see it. Just uh, go on my wall, scroll down, um, and you'll find it. And maybe I'll post it in this uh, event page uh, when this video is done, just so you have access. You can also just Google, right? So like CDC recommendations, coronavirus for you know, yeah, it, it, this is public information, right? It wasn't like I scoured the internet and went to the dark web, went in the back alley and got it. This is like easy public information. Right, so let's see one other public question. Let's see, there's a question. So when would you say we can safely spend time with our relatives over the age of 70? Uh, will you say just to do it now? What party is that? Yep, yeah, sure. I would recommend that if you have family members um, that are older, um, hug the shit out of them right now. Like literally hug them because oxytocin is amazing for healing, right? And so that human touch is so necessary for our function, it is ridiculous to deprive other humans of this. And so again, um, I'm a huge fan of like, what is, what is the worst case scenario, right? Well, the worst case scenario is yes, the, the person gets it. Well, what if that's a case? I can tell you all kinds of protocols to safely navigate that so they don't die, right? Anything, I mean, there's all kinds of people I posted. The stuff I posted is really just to build your innate immunity. I have some very other smart friends who are scientists, who are uh, naturopathic doctors, who have protocols on if you do have it, these are the things that you can do to really offset it. And I posted some things like the silver flower, there's, you know, IV drip of like IV uh, intake of vitamin C. There's all kinds of supplements you can take to minimize a cytokine storm, right? Inflammation. Um, I mean, there's even exosomes that has uh, proof showing that it decreases the formation of fibrosis in your lungs. There's all kinds of stuff, right? There's all kinds of stuff available um, that is not being used by traditional medicine, right? Because, you know, when you go to a traditional doctor, they're not be like, hey, let you put, let's put on some IV drip, you know, vitamin C. There's all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff. There's, you know, I've been I mean, speaking on stage, like simply uh, things like quercetin and ECGC from green tea, 
blocks that very specific enzyme that virus uses to spread. This is just research. This is, I'm not making this up, right? This is, again, not blog post stuff. This is published medical research showing this. All kinds of stuff are available um, to support people who do get it. Personally, I would rather have it and build the antibodies for it uh, versus getting uh, basically the virus, uh, the vaccine that's coming for sure. So uh, <laughs> kisses and hugs, thanks. Uh, yes, hugs. Hugs are amazing. Like oxytocin is incredible for our system. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, if you're at home and you have loved ones, I would hug them. Um, I really believe that if we just take a different reality to boost your immune system, we will absolutely be fine. Right. It doesn't matter if you're nine or 90. Just keep in mind that the 90 year olds that are um, passing away from this, it's because they're sick. And so, Right now, let's take the opportunity to get people to not be sick versus isolating them. Isolating them only makes them more sick, right? And so there's some very interesting thing that's happening. It's sad. It, when I Even when I speak about this, I feel um, sad for people that are like, just think like some older persons in their house probably by themselves right now, like my loved ones aren't even coming over and talking to me and hugging me. They feel lonely already. The national statistical average in America is 80% of the people over the age of 65 have depression, right? Is this helping the depression or hurting the depression, right? And so I would highly recommend reaching out to these people and hugging them. That already boosts your immune system. And so, and there's all kinds of things. Right now, have a heart to heart with them like, oh, you have blank and we'll just fill that label. And even better is you wanna speak in a language of root causes, I get it. In your life, mom or dad or uncle, you spent so much time putting yourself last and spent so much time putting us, the kids, putting you know all your efforts into supporting us. I want now to be the time where you make yourself number one. Now's the time to really take all efforts to make you the most important human being. Now's the time to support your immune system. Now's the time all the love you show me, given me, supported me with, I'm going to show it and give it to you back tenfold and do that. Like, wouldn't that be a very different story? Imagine the new set. Let's just do that for all the older people to skyrocket their health and skyrocket their immune system. We would have a very different America, a very different outcome. And I believe that will not come from top down. It is up to us. It is up to us to spread this message. It is us to do it, to embody it. And it's up to us to spread this message to um, our friends, our community. It, this has to be grassroots because it's not in the best interest of the company owners to go top down because they're losing money if you do this. This is why main reason why I'm having this call, right? So it's us. We, we're going to change the reality. It's time that, you know, it's when the government, when the companies are putting pressure on humans, some of the greatest revolutions comes from this. It is time to have a revolution. Uh, I'm not suggesting you get, you know, pick it and torches and you know burn companies down the revolution comes from love right the revolution comes from kindness love and kindness embodying that and showing that to each other to our relatives to our community this is more so than i mean it's awesome that people are like helping their neighbors and dropping stuff off i feel like we can do so much more let's 10x if you want to 10x anything 10x our efforts towards love and kindness to each other. Think outside the box. How can we actually 10x our love and kindness towards each other? I believe that as we do this, we can actually shift humanity forward. In the next year, I believe we have the greatest opportunity to shift humanity forward in a whole new direction. So. All right. Uh, that's it. I'm actually, so just so you know what's actually happening right now, I'm in this like, I don't know, this place is probably like 12,000 square feet. It's so big, you can get lost in here. I can tell they're in the other room. They're actually doing some, we'll say, um, not so legal substances in the other room. So I'm probably going to go there and supervise and make sure they're doing okay. So it's funny that I just said that publicly, but hey, I, I did not partake. And so I'm going to go and make sure they're all okay. And uh, any questions, you know, feel free to message me. Um, I'm basically just like playing around in Japan for the next couple of days before I head back. And I love you all. And I really, 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 really want all of you. I value my attention uh, very much. And so I spent this attention on here 
to literally try to inspire them to. It's almost like a call to action. Like, please, let's all work together and play together and have our synergistic attention together towards this. I believe we can shift.